got to watching somebody's video yesterday and because I wanted to know what it was like to have, it's essentially liposuction, fat grafting, where they take fat from anywhere in your body. And let me tell you, there's some videos on YouTube and it's really hardcore and gross to watch um, a surgeon stick a needle into fat and they just look, they're like, <laughs> they're like, they're just like, they're poking it and swirling it and oh my god it's like making a smoothie or something it's so gross oh it's hard to watch I was literally watching with my eyes like kind of closed it was like because it somehow made it better when I was a kid that's how I used to watch scary movies I'd like partially close my eyes so I was watching that and um because I thought well, my medical oncologist at Stanford wants me to go see hematology before I have surgery, and I have surgery in December, so right now it's scheduled for December 10th. Um, and then when I was listening to this woman, and she was talking about getting the fat grafting, um, she was showing her bruising, and the bruising is really intense. Oh my God. I'm worried. I wonder if I'm going to be able to do that. So that, I wonder if that's going to change things at all for me. I am overdue for getting my platelets checked. I should have gotten them checked like a week or so ago, but I, one thing, I just, I haven't done it. So I need to go tomorrow when they're open again and see if the Promacta I'm taking is working. I'm wondering because I've got these bruises on my leg and <clears throat> my EMDR therapist said that she wouldn't even bruise that bad she played volleyball in college and I'm like is it that bad it doesn't look that bad to me but I might be really used to being bruised so there's like five bruises in a row but they're pretty small they're like between a dime and a quarter size so anyway I need to get my blood checked and see if this stuff is working and then I'm wondering if I I'm wondering if I'm even going to be able to um, like have that fat grafting because I'm not kidding, the bruising looked like this woman took a softball into her leg, like somebody threw a softball three different times into her leg, that's what it, that's how bad the bruising was, it was really bad. So, hmm, that is super curious for me, because it just seemed like I was kind of ready to go, but we'll see, I mean, I could get all spun out in my head about how it's going to go or how it's not going to go, and I really don't know until I talk to hematology and then the surgeon again and see so yeah I also couldn't really tell I mean they're sucking the fat out which sounds great and and some level it is great because they can take the fat from wherever and they can they can put it into where the implant is and I guess they're starting to actually do this surgery where you only take fat and make a breast out of it because I heard somebody talking about it and it's really new, like, that's, they're just showing that the studies, they don't really have a lot of information on, like, what the long-term impact of that would be, which I don't, I mean, it's got to be better than putting an implant in your body. But, um, I know that, like, the, the, the fat gets reabsorbed into the body. I think I read something like 40 to 50% of the fat, um, gets reabsorbed, but then they can also just, like, do it again, you know? And that's why this fat grafting thing, they end up doing it multiple times because, um, you know, it doesn't take, like, the fat can die and then also the fat can, can get reabsorbed into the body. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how that's going to go. But I got plenty of spare fat hanging around after my chemo and radiation and just this super sedentary, heavy, I feel so heavy lately. Not just heavy weight, but just like heavy, you know? It's like hard to get out of this, um, this like, they say it's like post-traumatic stress disorder, and I, I believe it, you know? I don't, it's not even that I feel so negative about life, it's just that I don't have the, like, verve, the verve, verve, what's that, what's that word? I just don't have as much, like, juice, um, as I used to. I mean, at times I do, but... Overall, I used to just be able to, like, kick ass and take names all day. And now I just, like, barely kick my own ass. <laughs> so.
So, yeah, anyway, that's what I'm thinking about right now with this, like, whole liposuction and implants and surgery and platelets and hematology. So, what do I need to do tomorrow? See, I don't even know. I need to schedule hematology and go get my blood checked. So, we'll see where I'm at. Hopefully, cross my fingers, it's working. Otherwise, I have to try something else. And I've been really appreciating that this one hasn't had any side effects. I've been really, that I know of. I mean, maybe fatigue is one of them, but I'm kind of used to that at this point, so... Yeah, we'll see. So, uh, after I made that video, then I went to go see a friend of mine had a, um, a book signing. Well, I guess she didn't sign mine. <laughs> well, it was a book release party. And this is her book. It's called Conjugal Alicia. Poems by Alicia Van Der Borst. I think I said that right. Um, it was really lovely and... It just made me think about how important it is to, well, for anybody. I feel like as we get older, we like start to question whether or not we've really fulfilled what life has in store for us and what's most important. And I think with cancer, it just it comes up even more because we really never know how much longer we have. But like I always say, none of us know how much longer we really have. So yeah, it was really nice to see her doing... I think she's edited and contributed to other things before, but I don't know if she's done her own book of poetry. So it was, it was great to be a part of that. And then I went and got my... Uh, oh look, my breast form. Isn't that exciting? I just... Yeah. Put that thing back in there. Um... I notice I'm always like pulling stuff out of my teeth when I leave videos, which is pretty distracting to watch, but I did just eat as well, so I've got stuff in there. I went and got my tamoxifen. There it is, 20 milligram tablet, generic for Nolvidex. Every time I get so nervous, I mean, taking the Promacta made me nervous because I was just, I'm afraid of the side effects. Um, so I just wrote a post in two of the Facebook groups. I love the Facebook groups because number one, there's a lot of people, like many thousands of people. And number two, they respond right away. And then number three, their firsthand experiences. So rather than just looking up like breastcancer.org, list this whole list of what the most common side effects are, 30% or greater. And nausea, fatigue, mood swings, depression, hair loss. I think those were all within the 30%, but I love in those groups because, uh, you know, this is just firsthand experiences. So I asked people what were their worst side effects and did they do anything about it? You know, is there any way they could combat those side effects? I'm hoping that taking it at night, like I do the Promacta will alleviate some of them. Like if I wake up in the middle of the night, maybe I would have a night sweat or a hot flash, but I am hoping that I can alleviate some of it by doing it at night. So we'll see. I, I texted my medical oncologist, which always feels a little weird. I, I feel a little disrespectful on the one hand of like, okay, well, he's not working. But on the other hand, he has so many things he's, he's juggling. And I believe in taking matters into your own hands and not just thinking that, you know, it's like, anything is up to somebody else. So it's like my, my health is the most important thing to me. And I want to make sure that I'm like, you know, letting him know what's going on with me. Like I guarantee he has no clue when or if I even started tamoxifen because the medical oncologist at Stanford and he's at Grass Valley is the one who prescribed it for me. So, you know, I just like to be like, Hey, I'm here. Don't forget about me because then yeah, I just want to be like top of mind. So I am going to go in tomorrow and do the blood work. And so I told him that as well. And he's like, okay, thanks for, I think he said, thanks for letting me know. See you tomorrow. So <laughs> ah, yeah, I just wanted to share a little bit more of my day. We'll see how this goes. I'm supposed to take it for 10 years because I'm considered high risk having had stage 3A. It was right on the line between 3A and 3B. And I think 3A ends, no, I think 3A is still high risk, but 3B definitely is high risk. 
Um, so yeah, we'll see how it goes.